used to work as a janitor for my local shopping mall. The job itself was pretty straightforward. Empty the trash, clean the floors and windows, clean the bathrooms, etc. The only thing I didn't like about the job was that it required us to do all of this during non-business hours, which essentially meant my sleep schedule was completely opposite to that of a regular person. The mall wasn't that big, and so usually the only other people working at the same time as me were one or two security guards and maybe one other janitor. But the night this whole story takes place, I was the only janitor scheduled. As far as I can remember, there was supposed to be one security guard scheduled, though I hadn't seen him yet, and it was already 3am and halfway through my shift, so I honestly don't even know if he was there or not. It wasn't completely unheard of for me to not run into the security guard for a while, but this guy specifically was notorious for not showing up to a lot of his shifts, so there was actually a decent chance I was working completely alone that night. I was doing the regular, cleaning the floors while I slowly made my way towards the back of the mall. Something I should mention is I would always work with my headphones on. Now, I get it, probably not the best idea, as it made it almost impossible to hear anything around me, but frankly, 18-year-old me couldn't have cared less. Or, that was at least until I noticed something. One of those gates used to close up stores and malls wasn't closed all the way. It was like only halfway closed. I instantly took off my headphones and narrowed it down to two possibilities. Either one of the store's employees didn't properly close it for the night, or someone broke in after it had already been closed. Now, this took place in a pretty small town, where at least for the most part everyone knew everyone. The crime rate here is low to say the least, and so stupidly, I just instantly assumed it wasn't closed properly by an employee. Even though I was only a janitor, I did have access to a spare set of keys for all the stores, so I figured I'd just lock it up myself. And so I did. But as I was doing so, I swear I could hear some sort of rustling sound coming from further in the store. It sounded like clothes being moved and rubbing together. If I'm being completely honest, this shook me up pretty bad. I could feel my heart start to race as I was coming to the realization that there might actually be someone in there. But ultimately, I figured my mind had to have been playing tricks on me. I felt this sort of urge to go inside to confirm this. I can't really explain it, but I guess it kind of felt like the only way to put my mind at ease was for me to see for myself that it was nothing. So, I turned on my flashlight that I always carry around while I'm working and walked inside. It was deathly quiet in there, but I started slowly looking around with my flashlight. The store wasn't that big, and so this only went on for a couple minutes when pretty much everything had been searched except the very back of the store. I started walking over there, when just to the left of me, I could hear what sounded like breathing. I almost instantly pointed my flashlight to my left, and to my absolute horror, this revealed a man in one of those purge masks you'd see in the movies. It was clear the guy was trying to hide in a clothes rack. I also quickly noticed the guy was carrying a knife. Not like a small pocket knife, but rather a large hunting knife. I'm not gonna lie, I was so scared I froze. Before any words could be said, the guy lifted his finger up to his mouth as a way to signal me to be quiet. At that point, I figured I'd seen enough. I turned around and ran faster than I've ever run outside the mall and into my car in the parking lot. Before I could even catch my breath, I floated out of there while dialing 911. I wanted to call the security guard that was supposedly inside the mall to at least warn him, but for one, I didn't know his phone number, and two, like I said earlier, I didn't even know if he showed up for work that night. But I did leave a voicemail for my boss, and obviously called the police explaining everything that had just happened. I gave the best description of the guy that I could, but like I mentioned earlier, he had been wearing a mask, so there wasn't really much I could say. The next day when I showed up to work, that store specifically was completely roped off. It turns out it was robbed, and had been before the police were able to get there. A part of me feels bad for not doing anything, but I mean the guy had a knife. I think I'm justified in saying I'm not going to risk my life for the safety of some items in a store. As far as I know, the security guard that was supposed to work that night got fired. As for me, I worked that job for another two years after that. Ever since the robbery happened, the mall would always have at least three or four security guards present at night. I like to think this helped me in not experiencing any more terrifying things than that job again. But this will forever go down as one of the most terrifying things I've ever had to experience. I was 17 and in my third year of high school when this took place. The high school I went to had always been small, though for whatever reason this year in particular had a record high number of total students. And obviously with more students, this required more employees for the school, which included school janitors. 
In my opinion, it always felt like the school needed more janitors, and so it was actually kind of nice to see the school finally doing something about it. Though, needless to say, the process was slow. I mean, by this point it was already two weeks till winter break, and the school was still scrambling to find more janitors to hire. They had hired a few, but still clearly not enough to account for the total amount of students. Anyway, with winter break just around the corner, a lot of my classes had big project deadlines coming up. And so on Wednesday, me and my three friends decided to stay behind after school to complete a group project that we had honestly barely even started on yet. We worked in the classroom for our English class, as our English teacher, Mr. Simmons, was actually really nice, and we knew he wouldn't care if we stayed late in his classroom to complete our project. After maybe a couple hours of work, he would finally leave for the night. He left the classroom unlocked, and simply told us that when we were done, we would have to get a janitor to lock it for us. We worked for another couple hours, and that's around the time we were actually starting to finish the project. I opted to go find a janitor to lock the classroom for us, as I figured the quicker we could find one, the quicker we could go home. As I was walking down the halls alone, I couldn't help but get this incredibly eerie feeling. Being that it was winter, even though it was only around 7pm, there was absolutely no daylight coming in from the windows. It also didn't help that half the school's lights were already turned off by now, and that along with the fact that the school's practically empty of people, made for a really disturbing setting. I looked for a janitor for a good 10 minutes, but couldn't find anyone. It was like there was no one else on the ground floor except me and my three friends. As far as I knew, this wasn't normal at all. I was sure, there were always at least a few janitors working during non-school hours. But that's when I walked past the stairs leading down to the basement of the school. From what I could see, there were even less lights on down there than where I was. I stood at the top of the stairs for a good couple minutes debating if I really wanted to go down there or not. But that's when I heard what sounded like a vacuum. I figured that had to be a janitor, and so I started to walk down the stairs. Now, our school was set up so that right when you go down to the basement, the classroom just to the right was the computer room. I looked inside, as that's where it sounded like the noise was coming from. But that's when I realized it wasn't a vacuum, rather one of the computers was being powered on. And standing right next to it was a dark figure with his back to me, only illuminated by the dim light of the computer. Even in the darkness, I could tell the guy was wearing one of our school's janitor uniforms. I had absolutely no idea why a janitor would be powering up a school computer, but I disregarded it and said, um, hey man, is there a chance you could lock up a classroom for me? The guy stood up from his hunched position and turned around to look at me, but he didn't respond. He was just standing there. Um, hello? A few more seconds of silence, when out of nowhere, the guy started full on sprinting in my direction. The guy ran so fast, I barely had time to register what was going on. I, of course, turned around and ran back up the stairs, just to look back and see the guy was nowhere to be found. I figured he just ran further down the basement hallway. But that's when I realized these stairs were the only way out of the basement. There weren't even windows down there. Whether that was an actual janitor or not, I didn't care. I called the police and reported the situation. I then called my friends who came to stand at the top of the basement stairs with me and wait for the police to arrive. And when the police finally got there, we would lead them to the basement where we would be told to wait upstairs while they searched it. 20 minutes later, the police would come back up the stairs, now with a man in at least his early 60s in a janitor's uniform and in handcuffs. I instantly recognized him as the same man I had seen in the computer room. It later turned out that the man had been living in one of the school's basement supply closets for the better part of a week, which is where he had gotten the janitor's uniform in the first place. Left behind in the closet was a makeshift mattress, many empty food and drink containers, and most disturbingly, multiple Polaroid pictures of the school itself some even featuring unsuspecting kids in classrooms, or even just in the hallway during school hours. The guy was quite literally hiding in plain sight throughout the day, and was only getting away with it due to the vast amount of new janitors being hired, which allowed him to blend in with them. The man would of course be arrested, and this whole situation would actually cause the school to shut down for the rest of the week. The only thing still unclear, at least to me, are the guy's motives. Why he had all those Polaroid pictures of both the school and the students themselves, or even why he was in the computer room at night, still doesn't make any sense to me. I work as a janitor for a hotel company in my area. It's not really a housekeeper position, as I don't clean any rooms, 
Rather, I'm responsible for things like cleaning the pools, cleaning the floors of the lobby and hallways, refilling the vending machines, and various tasks like that. The company owns a few different hotels in the area, and since I work for the company itself, it's not uncommon for me to be constantly going back and forth between hotels during my shifts. The shifts themselves are always in the dead of the night, so as not to disturb guests. Typically, they'll be from 10pm to 6am. Anyway, this night I was doing the usual cleaning of the floors. I'd say I was around halfway through my shift, so it was like 2am at this point, when I look up and see some guy in his 40s down the hallway walking towards me. When he gets close enough, I take out my earbuds to see what he needs, and the guy explained to me that the remote to the TV in his room was completely broken. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I wasn't a housekeeper. I never went in the rooms, and technically my job didn't have any duties consisting of customer service whatsoever. I didn't really think I would have been of any help to the guy, but I figured I could at least try. I asked him how exactly it was broken, and he responded by saying that everything on the remote worked fine, just that he didn't understand how to operate the volume button. I found this kind of odd. I've seen what the remotes look like, and I can't imagine anyone not understanding how it worked. I mean, there was only a total of like six buttons. I tell the dude that if he grabs it from his room and brings it to me, I would gladly show him how it worked. But for whatever reason, that set him off. The guy starts complaining, saying how bad the customer service is, and how it would be so much easier if I just came to his room quick. And so eventually I give in. I asked him what his room number was, and it turns out he was only one floor above me. Plus, I figured it wouldn't take too long just to show someone how to change the volume on a remote. And so I told him after I finished cleaning the hallway I was working on, I would go up to his room. Around five minutes later, and I head up to his room to knock on his door. Hey man, I'm here to show you how the remote works. Right after I call out, I could faintly hear voices talking. It was muttered, but I could tell there were at least three different voices coming from inside. The talking went on for so long that I figured the guy hadn't heard me. But that's when the voices stopped, and maybe half a minute later the door slowly started to open. The guy barely cracked the door, like I'm talking maybe an inch. Something I noticed almost right away was that all the lights to the room were off. Other than the faint glow from the TV, it was completely black in there. The guy opened the door a bit and told me to come inside. I hesitated. I did not want to go in there. Everything in me was telling me it was a bad idea. Come on, come inside. The guy sounded more insistent this time. I pushed the door open, but tried to remain as much in the hallway as possible. I also took the opportunity to reach for the light switch just inside the door and turn it on. And to my horror, this revealed that the guy was completely alone in the room. I know for a fact, I heard multiple voices coming from the room just a few seconds earlier. My mind was racing. I started to panic, thinking more people could have been intentionally hiding in the room. I tried to quickly explain the volume switch from where I was standing. But the guy interrupted me, saying I needed to come inside and show him. I reached out my hand and asked for the remote, but the guy backed further into the room and gave me the hand signal meaning I needed to come to him. And I figured that was it. There was absolutely no way I was going inside that room. Without saying anything, I turned around and got out of there. But before getting in my car and driving off, I would warn the people working at the front desk. I thought about calling the police, but ultimately decided against it, as the guy technically didn't do anything illegal. I figured I couldn't really prove that he had intended to. I mean, I don't even know what his real intentions were. But, at least in my mind, I definitely avoided a very dangerous and even possibly life-threatening situation that night.